Nancy Wilkie from the United States Committee of the Blue Shield. Thank you. The U.S. Committee of the Blue Shield was founded in 2006 as a nonprofit, non governmental organization. Uh, we were designated under the 1954 uh, Hague Convention for the Protection of Cultural Property in the Event of Armed Conflict as the group that should coordinate with the military. This comes under the second protocol of the Hague Convention. We like to say that the U.S. Committee of the Blue Shield and all national Blue Shield committees are the equivalent of the Red Cross and Red Crescent. We're the equivalent for the protection of culture in the same way that the Red Cross and the Red, Red Crescent protects humans. Uh, since our founding, we were engaged in training of troops that were about to be deployed uh, to Afghanistan and other par parts of the Middle East. Um, and I'm sure that we will continue to do that as more and more troops are being deployed uh, in, in the future. But today we are most heavily engaged in, let's see, I have to find this, okay. In pre, uh, preparing cultural heritage inventories of sites that should be protected. These sites include libraries, archives, museums, monuments, um, archaeological sites, things like that. We prepare these lists and then we turn them over to the Defense Intelligence Agency, which then shares them with the Department of Defense so that these uh, uh, places can be entered into the targeting databases as places that should should not be targeted, that should be protected. We did have great success with this in the NATO campaign uh, in Libya. As you may know, no cultural sites were damaged in that campaign because a list that we prepared that was shared with NATO helped to protect those sites. We also have agreed that we will archive these sites so that they will be available in the future. And we've, we have signed a contract with TDAR, the Digital Archaeological Record, to do that. And the Digital Archaeological Record will maintain these lists. They will be password protected. We can say who can access them. And they will migrate the, this information into any new platform that comes along. So these lists will be available well into the future for the military to access. So we are absolutely determined that the US government, through its military, will protect the archaeological and cultural heritage, not just of Syria, but of other countries worldwide. <laughs> 